This next movie is going to be Problems in Conservation of Energy. We're going to solve a few problems. The idea of conservation of energy is very simple. If you add up all of the energy before something happens, it's got to equal the sum of all of the energy after something happens. Very similar to conservation of momentum. The only difference is here, we have lots of different kinds of energy that we need to talk about, whereas momentum was just momentum. So let's start out by just taking a look at a very simple problem and then using the problem as an example. Let's see. Well, let's do a roller coaster problem. I think that'll be the best way to start out. A nice draw a roller coaster here. Really standard physics problem. And uh, so we're going to have the roller coaster starting up here. And just to make the problem easier, let's say it starts out with zero speed up at the top of this hill. I'm going to make this hill 20 meters high. And then I've got the bottom of the hill, which I'll call point A. And then I've got the top of the next hill, which I'll call point B. And let's make this hill 8 meters high. And of course the question is, when the roller coaster gets down here, I want to know what's the speed. And when the roller coaster gets over here, I want to know what's the speed. Of course this is all assuming that there is no friction. Right? This is really important for the problem. We can add in friction later on, um, but for now let's just keep it nice and simple. So let's do conservation of energy. Let's talk about what's the speed at point A at point A. Well, how do we set this problem up? Conservation of energy. I have to add up all of my energy at the top of the hill, and that's going to equal adding up all of my energy at the bottom of the hill. Now, it's actually a pretty easy problem, but we'll just go through it all just so we can see how it looks. What types of energy am I actually talking about here? Well, I don't have any spring energy. No elastic energy, so I'm just talking about kinetic energy and potential energy. That's it. So what do I have before anything happens? I have mgh, that's potential energy, plus one-half mvi squared. I'm going to set that equal to mgh plus one-half and the F squared. Now it might help to actually write in HI and HF. So that's my height at the top of the first hill and my height at the bottom of the next hill. Then I just have to start plugging things in here. Notice one thing though. Notice how there's an M everywhere in every term in the equation. There's an M there, there's an M there, there's an M there, there's an M there. So the M's are all going to cancel. I don't have to worry about the mass. In fact, it's independent of the mass of the roller coaster. So that's easy. Um, another thing that I know is that this initial velocity is zero, so I can get rid of this term. And the other thing I know is that this final height is zero, so I can get rid of that term. Now I just end up with a really, really easy problem. I just have g times the initial height is one half times the final velocity squared. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the final velocity. So if I want to, I can just rearrange it algebraically before I even plug in numbers. I'm going to get this VF is the square root of 2 times G times H initial. And now I can plug in numbers for it. Square root of 2 times 10 meters per second squared times the initial height of the hill I think was 20 meters. Let's just go back and check. Oops. Yes, 20 meters was the initial height. So let's plug that back in down here, times 20 meters, and then we can just solve it. Pretty easy to do. Um, if you do that, you should end up with um, Vf is the square root of, what is that? 400. So Vf is 20. Good? Easy. 
So now let's do another problem. Let's do something. Oh, actually, you know what we need to do is we need to go back and we have to look at what's the speed at point B up here. We need to figure this one out. And there's a couple ways we can do this. We can now, if we want to figure out the speed at the top of the hill B, we can say, hey, maybe let's make this point our initial point, right, at A. Or we can start out with our initial point right there. Either way, it's going to be just fine. Let's start out with our initial point as here at the original position, and then our final point is going to be over here at, at point B. So let's just do that problem. Easy enough to do. Get some more space. And going to set it up the same way. Uh, sum of all the initial energy equals the sum of all the final energy. Same thing as well. We've got mg times the initial height plus one half m initial velocity squared equals mg times the final height plus one half m times the final velocity squared. Once again, all the m's are going to cancel, so we don't really need to worry about the m's. m goes away. Should be m blue. m goes away. m goes away. m goes away. All right, so that's fine. Also, once again, I don't have any initial velocity. My initial velocity is zero, so that can go away. Everything else needs to stay. Um, so let's see what we got here. We're going to have g times the initial height, and that's going to equal g times the final height plus one-half times the final velocity squared. And that's going to make the algebra a little bit harder, but nothing too tricky. I'm going to just try to solve for Vf. Well, let's see here. I'm going to get g times the initial height minus g times the final height is 1 half times Vf squared. Just going to put things on the other side now. V, keep that half. Let's make that f a little bit smaller. Right. V f squared is g. Now look what I can do here. I can take initial height minus final height. That's going to be really interesting. We'll take a look at that in a moment. V f squared is 2 times g times the initial height minus the final height. And then finally, we just take the square root square root of 2g hi minus hf. So what's interesting about this equation that we're seeing here is it's very similar to the one that we solved for the other problem. So if we look at this equation, it's really similar to the other one we had for the previous problem, which was just vf equals square root 2gh. So what this says is that if my h value here is just the total height of the hill from top to bottom, that's going to be fine. Remember, we had our hills were shaped like this. So if my initial hill height is just from the top to the bottom, that's all good. I plug it in there. But if I go from the top of the hill down to the bottom and then I come back up a little bit, all I want is the difference in the height. So really, all I want is that height right there. That is my initial height minus my final height. So that's what the difference is that I want to look at that equation. If my final height is at zero, so if that term is at zero, then I just get my original formula back, which is totally fine. Right? Um, I forgot we actually need to plug in numbers into this one. Let's plug in numbers for this formula right here, just so we get what the answer is. Uh, let's see, v f equals the square root of 2 times 10, I'm going to drop my units, and it was a 20 meters minus an 8 meters. So that should give me the square root of, I think it turns out to be 240. So whatever you get there for decimals, that's totally fine. So that's how we do these roller coaster problems, and um, they should work out for you. There we go.